Hello, this is Tyler from Wensco Sign Supply, and today we're going to talk about rasterization with white toner printing. So this is something that can add a lot to your prints. It can make them last a lot longer, feel a lot better on the shirt, and resist the ability to crack. So that's what we're going to talk about today, so stay tuned. There are two major forms of rasterization in the RIP software. The other way to do it is to do it like in Photoshop or Illustrator. We won't go into that in this video, but if you're interested in that, you can either look it up on YouTube and we'll probably do it in a future video on how to do rasterization in there. But the two major forms in the RIP software is to do dots or to do lines, and we'll go over both in this video. The first form that we're gonna go over today is dots. I'll show you how to get to it in the RIP software right here, but basically you just want a dot size of about 220, frequency of about 25, and I think that's the sweet spot, and I'll show you why. Right here you can see the little preview of what it looks like with a regular dots at the 220, 25, and then what it looks like with high frequency. So you can see there's a lot more dots. I think these dots are too close together. What'll happen at this point is you'll get glue to go into the holes. So instead of it being breathable, you'll get little white dots instead of it being transparent. So I have a little section where you can see here what it looks like once the glue is filled in and all the holes. So. That's why this frequency is a little too high because you basically won't be able to get it without getting the glue in the holes. The second option is the larger dots. This one, you won't get any glue in the holes, but the problem is you're gonna lose a lot of your color and vibrancy in your image. So this image will be super breathable, super washable, but the main problem will be that it'll be losing all of its color, all of its vibrancy, all of that stuff. So those are the options for dots. You can kind of play with frequency and dot size up and down a little bit, but if you go any higher than like 28 on frequency, you're almost guaranteed to get glue in the holes. And if you go too low, um, you just won't have enough dots for it really to make an impact. The second popular form of rasterization is lines. The most common way to do this is straight up vertical lines. The reason for this is if you stretch the shirt, you'll actually stretch the material as well as the design without it cracking. So that's why it's the most popular way. I'll show you how to do that in the software here. But basically you just want an angle of 90 and then the same numbers as before. So frequency 25, hole size 220. And you can see right here the difference between the normal settings and again, high frequency. So again, we'll have the same issue with the lines this close together. Um, I don't think it'll print super well. It'll be really hard to stick without getting glue in between the little spaces that are there. It just doesn't give you enough space to not get the glue to kind of bridge that gap. So that's what it looks like here. The next one will show you with the larger lines. This one, same thing as before. You're just losing all vibrancy. The picture quality has gone down significantly. So that's why I wouldn't go with this one. The line one, you can definitely play with. I'll show you here an angle of 30. Sometimes the 90 degree angle isn't what you're looking for. If your design has a particular angle to it, sometimes you want to get the rasterization to match that angle so that the image looks normal even with the rasterization in. Lines can also be played with a lot with frequency because you can really space out the lines a lot and still get good breathability in your image while breaking it up just periodically. So lines is one I highly recommend playing with. You can dial that uh, the frequency and the dot size up and down as much as you want and you'll still get a lot of good breathability in it so these are the two major forms of rasterization if you have other settings that you use or you like put them in the comments below but this is what i have found to be the most helpful to show you how to do it in the software so that you can do it yourself and get good rasterizations we'll show a future video on how you want to press rasterizations as there is a little bit of a process to it so you don't get that glue in the middle but I hope this was helpful. If you liked it, leave a like, leave a comment below, and make sure to subscribe to our channel. Thanks, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.